What is up guys, it's Code Red here. Welcome to my IntelliJ tutorial video. This video is gonna go over how to install the IntelliJ IDE and basically go over everything, including Maven support, the Minecraft plugin, as well as building and actually, you know, exporting your plugin to your server. My videos and actually most of my coding experience is actually in Eclipse. I've been using Eclipse for many, many years. I love the simplicity of it. And basically the more control you have on your own side, I guess, while well, IntelliJ really does a lot of things for you. But when you get into more advanced plugins, when you get into actually using GitHub and all the version control support, IntelliJ is really the best IDE out there. It also comes with a lot of cool plugins and actually plugins that you guys can create yourself, which I might actually go over one day. But without further ado, let's actually get into the video. Now, the IntelliJ we're going to be using is the Community Edition. You can go ahead and download the community right here. But instead of doing this, I'm actually going to show you a better way of downloading IntelliJ that will really make your life a lot easier and also provide a lot more different, um, you know, JetBrains tools for you guys. So the easiest way to do this is go to Google and type in Toolbox JetBrains Download. I also have all the links in the description below. Once you go to this site, you'll see the first one pop up. This is what we are going to download in this video. This is really an awesome app for all of JetBrains. Um, like I said, all JetBrains like tools they have. As you can see this little example right here, you can have all these different IDEs installed. I actually already have it installed already. It's right down here. So when you open it up, you'll see all the ones you have installed and all the ones that are available. Currently, I just have C Lion installed, which is the C++ IDE for JetBrains. I did uninstall I, uh, IntelliJ for this video. Once you have it installed, it is very simple to run. Go down to this little uh, hidden icon symbol and you should see your JetBrains symbol right here. If you don't see JetBrains there, just go to the search bar, type in uh, toolbox and you should see it right there and you can go ahead and run it. Go ahead and click on it and you'll see all the different IDEs here. You can go ahead and install all the different IDEs that you want. They have a lot of useful IDEs. Like I said, I use C++ for, I mean, C line for coding C++, which is a pretty useful feature, especially if you are in school for C++ right now, the one I use for my classes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install, like I said, the community edition. This is the free edition. If you want to go ahead and buy IntelliJ, you can use the ultimate edition. I just use the free one. I'm going to go ahead and click install. All right, once it's done installing, you go ahead and just click on it and it'll open up the IntelliJ for you. When you open up IntelliJ for the first time, you should get this little window. Mine's gonna look a little different because I already have some plugins installed and I already have some projects created. However, it should look pretty similar to this. I went ahead and full screened it for you guys to make it a little easier to see. But the first thing we're going to do is go to plugins before we create anything and we're gonna download the necessary plugins you need to code Minecraft plugins. I see I'm in the marketplace tab and you see there's a lot of you know, featured and like new ones you can uh, download. You can go through and see which ones you like. However, I'm gonna go over the ones I already have installed. Now there should be a little list on the screen of the ones that are really necessary to install. There's also some really cool ones like this autocomplete for Java and JavaScript. This is probably the best autocomplete out there. They did, however, change to uh, tab nine, which I really kind of don't like. So if you can somehow install this old version, I recommend installing this old one. It really helps you code. It also gives you like code examples and you know, it gives you recommendations of like how to make your code better, which I absolutely love. So this is a great autocomplete. Go ahead and download that. But I do recommend downloading this Atom uh, material icons. This is going to change your IntelliJ icons to more, you know, cool, sleek ones. If you want an idea that looks similar to mine, go ahead and use this material icons. Download a plugin. It's very simple. Let's go to search bar in the marketplace and type in the plugin you want to download. Next one that I recommend installing is the Discord integration. Discord integration is pretty awesome. It's just gonna show you guys when you're on Discord, what plugin you're working on and what class file that you're in. If you want your friends to see what plugin you're working on, or if you want you know, your fan or your audience to see that you're working on your plugin for spigots, go ahead and download this plugin. Next up is the key promoter plugin. 
This is an awesome plugin, especially if you're new to IntelliJ, because it tells you different shortcuts you can use to do certain things. So say if you're importing it by, you know, using your mouse to click on it, it give you a little pop up on the bottom right saying, hey, here's a shortcut to import things. The most important plugin to download is this Minecraft development plugin. This is what we're gonna be using in all of my series, what we're using in this episode to build our plugin. So go ahead and make sure you have this downloaded because the rest of the video will not make sense. If you don't have it downloaded. Other ones to make you know your IDE look better is the one dark theme. Go ahead and install it if you want your IDE look cool like this. Um, I have a custom theme on that Inspro built for me, or not for me, but he had it built. I'll go ahead and give you guys that in the description below. Hopefully he won't be mad that I'm giving you that. And then the other ones are the Mario progress bar. If you like Mario like me, <laughs> it's a little progress bar of Mario. There's also a bunch of other cool progress bars. Go to the search, search bar, type in progress bar, and you can see there's a, you know, a Pokemon, Pokemon one. You know, a bunch of different ones you can go ahead and download. Other than that, the really only other plugin I recommend downloading is this string one. And, you know, you can have, you know, this rich person's one if you would like. Once you have all the necessary plugins created, let's go ahead and create our project. It is so easy to create a project when you have this Minecraft plugin installed. Go to projects, go to new project, and right here, we're going to select our Minecraft. Like you see, we are using Maven, but we're not going to create a Maven project through this. We're going to create a Maven project through Minecraft plugin. Go ahead and click Minecraft, click the plugin of choice or the mod of choice that you want to do. In this episode, we're going to do creating a spigot plugin. Go to spigot plugin, and then let's make sure we have uh, Java 1.16 installed. If you don't have Java 1.16 installed, there's a little link in the description below. Go ahead and install it because 1.17 spigot uses Java 16. So once you have Java 16 selected and the spigot plugin, go ahead and press next. And here, it'll look a little different for you new IntelliJ users. I'm gonna go ahead and create my version 1.0 and the first one right here, the group ID, if you're used to creating Spigot plugins, this is basically what your package is called. Mine's usually named me.codedred. If you have a website, you could do org.yourwebsite. However, if you don't have a website, this is basically your basic package name for you new coders. Uh, me.codedred, me.yourname. The artifact ID is where we put the project name, the plugin name. Our plugin's gonna be called hello. Oh, hello. Kind of a lame project name, whatever. But next up, make sure you have Maven selected. I might go over this one later, but right now we're just using Maven. Go ahead, press next. And here, as you can see, has some spigot settings. This is your plugin.yml. The most important things to hear is just to make sure that your main class and everything looks good. And then you have the Minecraft version of 1.17 installed. This Minecraft plugin only goes down to 1.12. If you want a later version, I mean, a, like an earlier version of Minecraft, you're just going to have to change the pawn yourself and put it in there. However, we're using 1.17 in this video. Go ahead and change this if you would like. Put author of your name in here. I'm not going to worry about too much about this because this is an example plugin. Go ahead and press next. And this is the project name that is going to be stored in your folder. I'm just going to name it hello and press finish. Once you press finish, this is what will open up. It opens up your project for you and has everything already created for you. It has your main class of your on enable, your on disable. It also has your plugin.yml. If you go into SRC, go to main, and then inside Java will show you your code, inside resources will show you, you know, your YMLs. And here is your plugin.yml already created with that main class, which I know a lot of new coders have a problem um, setting this up. It already has plugin.yml in there. It already has your main class. Like I said, you can code in this main folder right here in the Java, and then here's your package. Go ahead and go click on new package to create all your new classes and stuff. Pretty simple, pretty you know similar to Eclipse. But what's not similar is if you've never used Maven before, this is a great tutorial. I'm gonna go over Maven. With all the plugins that we installed, it is actually pretty simple because they already put all of our builds and stuff in here for Maven. Really, there's only a few things that we need to change, but to go over it real quick, 
This is basically the stuff that we did earlier. You don't really need to worry about any of this, except when you change the version, if you have an update in your plugin, you can do 1.1 or you know, 2.2, whatever, um, whatever version your plugin is. That's where you go ahead and change that version. Moving down, don't worry about any of this. And this is where, how our plugin gets built. It's built through our Maven Shade plugin. If you don't see this, go ahead and make sure you have Maven installed on IntelliJ. It should automatically install for you guys, so you don't have to worry about it. But the most important thing that we're going to change in this is the output file. This is where a lot of people get confused when they build something in Maven. They're like, where the heck did it get built? And we're just going to change it right away because we don't want to worry about where it ended up. So inside our build, inside plugins, inside our first Maven plugin here, we're going to scroll down to see configuration. And then underneath this, we're going to type in output, ooh, output file. And it should automatically do all this stuff for you. And then we need to put in where we want our file to output. If you want to, this is very easy. Just go to your uh, file location. Let's see, here it is. So go to your server, your spigot server, go to your plugins folder, and then you can just click this top bar, control copy, and paste it in right here. However, we are not done yet. This is the output file location. So it's gonna output to this folder. However, we need to do a backslash and then the name of the plugin dot jar. So it's going to save this plugin as hello dot jar at this location. Very, very simple. Once that is done, when we run our Maven plugin, whatever, our, whenever we build it, it's going to save the jar file right there. Next up is a repository and dependencies. With the Maven, with the Minecraft plugin, it's super simple. They already have it built for you. Here is our dependency of our spigot 1.17. And then here's our repositories. I'm gonna go over real quick how to add a dependency. Say you have a placeholder API dependency. It's super, super easy. Go find placeholders API right here. You can scroll down to uh, API usage right here. We'll then open up this GitHub and it'll show you how, you know, to use placeholders API with Maven. And what we're going to do is just got to copy this right here, repository, copy that, go to our code and paste it into the repository. Then we're going to copy the dependency of it, copy the uh, dependency and paste it into the dependency. One thing if you're new to Maven, make sure you always have when you open a dependency, you're closing dependency or opening it, you close it and then make sure it's inside your total, you know, the big dependency one. Once you paste this in, you're going to see this little red underline under version. It's because we didn't put the version in there yet that we want to install. I'm going to go over Play Source API and just install the, you know, the latest version right here, 2.10.10. Copy that and replace it with version. And there we go. To reload, this is very important, to reload Maven we're gonna go to this right side right here. And there's this little button right up here you can click to reload the Maven changes. However, if you don't have the Maven tab open, click on Maven and you can click this little arrow right here to reload it. And it's really that simple. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually build and export your plugin. We're gonna go over to the Maven tab right here. Make sure you have it open. Click on the folder of your plugin, then click on life cycles, life cycle. It's really simple guys. Double click install. It's going to open up this little console and it installed. Go ahead and check your output folder. Make sure it installed correctly. I have two hello worlds, but this is this one right here. We just installed. And just like that, that is how you use IntelliJ. It's so, so simple. But let's go over a few other things just in case your IntelliJ doesn't look quite like mine. Go over top to uh, file, go to settings. This is our settings for IntelliJ. If you want to change your theme and stuff, go to editor, open that up, and then go to right here, color. And here you can actually select 
theme that you want to use. If you download one dark theme, you can, you know, install one of the one dark themes. However, you see I have a custom dark theme. This is the one in Inspiral builds. If you want to install this, I have it in the description below. You can go over to import the IntelliJ ID color scheme, and then you can find that jar file and press OK. There you go. I hope all this really made sense to you. I wanted to go over IntelliJ before I actually start using it in my series and actually coding with it. IntelliJ can be a little complex, you know, a little confusing for new developers, especially when it comes to importing and stuff. Uh, just, you know, you just got to push through it. it. It did take me a little bit to get used to everything. But once you push through it, you really see how great IntelliJ is. And like I said, we are going to be using this in my next series and stuff. So if you want to follow along with the videos, I do recommend downloading IntelliJ and, you know, using Maven. Maven's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a Coded Red tutorial. If you did like the video, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Join my Discord, and have a lovely day. I'll see you guys later.